In this video, I tried beating Terraria with guns only, but here's the twist. I installed a mod that allows my weapons to gain experience for hitting enemies. With each level, increases the damage, critical strike chance, size, and best of all, the number of projectiles. Just how strong will my guns become at the end of this? Stay tuned to find out. Alright, let's go get my first gun. Because I'm in a world with corruption, it's possible for me to get my hands on the musket from the shadow orbs. There is also the option of finding the boomstick in the jungle, which would be a lot better, but it'd be much harder to find. So once I find some bombs, I'll be going for the musket first to start off. Now once I break the shadow orb to get the musket, it also comes with a hundred bullets. But these bullets aren't going to last very long. Luckily, having any gun inside my inventory, then the arms dealer will be allowed to spawn, and then I can buy some more bullets. Alright, I've got enough wood. Let's go find some bombs. There we go. Got 18 bombs. Now I'm just going to stay in the jungle for just a bit, because I did see some life crystals from before. And who knows, there might be a chance to get the boomstick. What did I say? Let's go! But unlike getting the boomstick, getting the musket does not come with any bullets, unfortunately. So I won't be able to kill any monsters. Magic mirror. I will take that. Wow, that... Okay then. I should not have done that. But since I'm back up here... Let's go make ourselves a little house to store some of my stuff away. And it's the perfect opportunity to build some NPC houses to try to get the arms dealer to move in. There we go, inventory is cleaned out. I know I just got my hands on the boomstick, but I am still going to go to the corruption to get the musket because it does still come with the 100 bullets, which I really want because I am dying to all of these monsters. Hey, finally made it down without dying. <gasps> oh, that's an underground pyramid. Wait, okay, let's go check this one out first. Okay, maybe I should have started from the top. <laughs> this is taking a very long time. Okay, I've had enough of this. Just gonna throw a dynamite down. Let's see. Am I close? Yes, I am. There it is, okay. If I get the Pharaoh set, I am going to be so pissed off. Because otherwise, I did all that mining for nothing. Okay, moment of truth. Three, two, one. Yes, okay. Oh, I will take that. Warding. Oh, and we just got paid. Oh my god, 26 gold. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Okay, that was worth it. And there are some life crystals down here, so let's go pick those up real quick. And then, let's get back on task. And that should be it. Okay, time to break some shadow orbs. Perfect, first one is a musket. And we've got a hundred musket balls. I can afford to break one more, so let's do that as well. There we go. And we just got a light source. Let's head back up, and let's test out these two weapons now. So, one shot from the boomstick gains us... 21 points of experience. Okay, and now with the musket... 6. Yeah, the boomstick is going to be leveling up way faster. Let's make the tungsten pickaxe, and some NPC houses because I really need some more bullets from the arms dealer. Okay, hopefully six should be enough, but it looks like nighttime is arriving pretty shortly, so it looks like I'm gonna have to wait until daytime for the arms dealer to spawn. In the meantime, I'm gonna go back down into the jungle to find more life crystals and accessories. Okay, I found some rubies, which means I will be summoning the king slime because that boss gives a bunch of experience. Oh, wow, that's a lot of rubies, actually. <gasps> okay, that's enough for a hook, then. As well as some slime crowns. 
Okay, a goblin army is approaching. That's kind of not what I wanted right now. Actually, you know what? No, it's completely fine. Since the arms dealer did arrive. But I'm just going to stay down here until I reach max health. Ooh, okay. Suspicious looking eye. Which means I can summon the Eye of Cthulhu whenever I want. And because there are two anvils here, I can just craft the Ruby Hook. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Guarding Hermes Boots. Also, don't tell me those are diamonds right here. I just made the Ruby Hook. Okay, no, it's Sapphire. Nope, it's Diamond. What am I saying? God damn it. I literally just made the ruby hook like one minute ago. I guess I'm making the diamond hook then. And there is the last life crystal for max health. Okay, let's return back home and take care of the goblin army. But first, I need to buy some ammo. Perfect. Okay. And this event is going to be perfect for leveling up my weapons. And I think my boomstick, yeah, is almost at level 1. So let's see what changes. It's at 14 range damage and 4% critical strike chance. After it gets level 1, it increased to 16 damage and 5% critical strike chance. But projectile wise, I don't think it has changed. Oh, never mind. Because the boomstick shoots out three to four bullets. And I think I just saw five. Yeah, right there. So it has changed then. And the goblin army has been defeated. And judging from the number of projectiles that I'm shooting out, I think I've leveled this weapon quite a bit. Moment of truth. Oh yeah, level four with 24 range damage and 8% critical strike chance. I can't even count how many bullets I'm shooting out now. That looks to be like over eight. Oh my God. Now I've racked up a good amount of gold. So I've decided that I'll be purchasing the mini shark from the arms dealer. Why? Well, if you guys know, this weapon shoots insanely fast and the faster I can attack, the faster I gain experience. It's also way more accurate than the boomstick. Which also means that I will no longer be using the boomstick and the musket. Let's make some armor now. So the tungsten helmet, chainmail, and gold greaves. As well as the diamond hook, of course. God damn it. And since it has turned into nighttime, with me having max health and some pretty good accessories, I'd say, for now. I think I'm ready to take on the Eye of Cthulhu. So let's build this platform real quick. Okay, and then let's place down a campfire. And let's summon the boss. Oh, let's also check real quick. Six damage on the mini shark and 4% critical strike chance. And we'll check it out after this boss. Okay, second phase. Oh, I'm starting to shoot out two bullets now. Wait, did my attack speed get faster too? And you're dead. Okay, that was pretty quick. Got the shield of Cthulhu, so now I can dash. And now my mini shark is at level 1. Almost level 2, actually. But to level this weapon up some more, I'll be fighting the King Slime. So let's make a couple of gold crowns. And I do have to wait until daytime so that slimes can spawn for their gel. Wait, really? Another goblin army? Oh my, wait, okay, no, no, that's good, actually, that's good. That just means more experience. There we go. The goblin army has been defeated once again. 
which brings the mini shark to oh boy level five with 18 range damage and nine percent critical strike chance and my shots look like this now oh yeah that's pretty good very soon it's gonna have the spread of a shotgun and i cannot wait for that okay that should be enough gel yep I just needed 20 to make a slime crown. There we go. And let's get this thing started right away. Oh my god, look at that. I'm shredding this boss. Holy. Just like that. Wait, that was insane. And now I have way more gel to make a lot more king slime summons. Let's make three more. Jesus. Well, that's one. That's two. And that's the last one. What's my level going to be? Okay, not bad. It gained two more levels. Hopefully within these four treasure bags, I can get the slimy saddle. There it is. And I think I'm just going to replace my current armor with the ninja armor set. Just because it gives a critical strike chance and the movement speed is really nice. So my mini shark now has 22% critical strike chance. The next boss that I'll be taking on, which many of you guys can guess, the Eater of Worlds. And to be honest, I really don't think I need to build an arena for this one. Alright, here we go. Now, will this boss be able to touch me at least once? Oh, yep, okay. <laughs> I was a bit cocky there. Oh my god, this is so satisfying. One more. There we go. I see that there are enough shadow orbs to summon the Eater of Worlds once again. So I'm going to do that for some more experience. Here we go again. Okay, this time. Will the boss be able to touch me? Oh no, okay. Oh, that was close. So far so good. Oh my god, that was scary. Mission successful. Okay, that time, perfect run. Let's check out the mini shark now. Ooh, okay, level nine. So it has gained two levels, I believe. With some demonite bars and shadow skills, I can now craft the full shadow armor, as well as the nightmare pickaxe. Okay, and this armor set gives a bunch more critical strike chance. So, from 24 critical strike chance, all the way to 30. There's just one more boss to fight before taking on the Wall of Flesh, which is Skeletron. So let's head over to the dungeon to summon the boss, and hopefully I can defeat it before daytime arrives. It's going to be very risky. It's definitely going to be a close one. Okay, here we are. Come on, get up. Quick, 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 summon the boss, go. Oh, I'm stuck. Oh my god, wait, what's happening? Okay, there we go. Hands first, of course. Oh yeah, the hands are done for. Okay, just ahead. Oh wait, this is not close at all. What am I saying? That took mere seconds. Well, the mini shark is officially a shotgun. Oh my god. Because one click, that's like three to four bullets coming out. 
And the mini shark has gained a full level. Cool. Now that I have access into the dungeon, there's a couple of things I want to get, but they're kind of optional. One is, of course, the Cobalt Shield, which is the mandatory one. And the other, which is the handgun. Now, that one is the optional one. I don't think I'm going to go for that because the mini shark is just infinitely better. But I really don't know because the handgun can be upgraded into the Phoenix Blaster. But I know that the Phoenix Blaster does not have any special effects. It doesn't set any enemies on fire. Nothing like that. So yeah, I think I'm just going to settle with the mini shark for now. First gold chest. There's the cobalt shield. And there's the handgun. Okay. That's everything that I wanted. And as you guys can tell, the handgun, it's not really that good. Ooh, and the traveling merchant is selling the DPS meter. I will buy that just so I can keep track and show you guys how much damage I'll be dealing. Okay, all that's left is to take on the wall of flesh. So let's mine down to hell. Okay, finally made it down to hell. I did say I was going to fight the wall of flesh, but I think I'll put a hold on that for now. Instead, I'll be mining some hellstone to craft the molten pickaxe and to turn the handgun into the phoenix blaster just to see how good the weapon is. Now if I can find an obsidian skin potion that would be great because that will make mining the hellstone a lot easier. If not then I'll just carefully mine them like this because I don't need that much hellstone to craft it too. Okay well I just got the obsidian skin potion but I think I collected enough already. So let's head back. Now I can craft the Molten Pickaxe and the Phoenix Blaster. Ooh, okay. And we got Unpleasant on it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's still very slow. Yeah, comparing the Phoenix Blaster to the Mini Shark, it doesn't even come close. And leveling up this weapon would probably take forever. Okay, I just remembered that I did defeat the goblin army twice, which means the goblin tinkerer is now allowed to spawn. So let's look for him so that I can combine all of my accessories together. Oh, there he is. Let's buy the rocky boots and the workshop. I'm also going to reforge the mini shark as well. Try to get it to unreal if that's possible, but I might end up losing all of my gold oh my god please rapid yeah i think i'm gonna have to settle with that oh okay i will take that blizzard in a bottle and a gravitation potion which means that once i do find the shiny red balloon i can combine it with the blizzard in a bottle first things first let's go up to some sky islands First one, what have we got? Perfect, shiny red balloon. Second one. Okay, there we go, lucky horseshoe. That means I won't have to go to the third one because the last one has the star fairy. Okay, first things first, specter boots. Oh, okay, I'll take the armored. Then the blizzard in a balloon. Turn it into the white horseshoe balloon. And then let's combine the obsidian skull with the cobalt shield for the obsidian shield. I should be good to take on the wall of flesh now. Oh, and there's the voodoo demon. Okay, I can now summon the wall of flesh. Made it to the end of the world. Let's drink our potions. And into the lava you go. Okay, my guess is that this boss is going to take no longer then 10 seconds once I start shooting. Everyone, start the counter. Three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What did I say? I was a bit close, nine seconds. Let's open the treasure bag now and hopefully I can get the Ranger Emblem.
Yes, let's go. That's an additional 15% increased range damage. And I might as well summon the Eye of Cthulhu. Just for a bit more experience. Jesus. Okay, and just an update. My mini shark is now at level 12. Yeah, that's crazy. So now that I'm in hard mode, let's talk to the arms dealer and purchase the ammo box to save some ammo. I might as well buy the illegal gun parts because I'll be using that later on for another weapon. And lastly, I will be purchasing the shotgun because it is a material and I believe you can turn it into the onyx blaster. So I do need to farm two dark shards and ten souls of night. Let's go to the corruption now to break some demon altars. Oh, I just got my first dark shard. I'll get the other one right after I break some altars. So we got cobalt, or calcum, and lastly, titanium. And there's the last dark shard. Okay, that's enough cobalt ore. On to the ore calcum. Good on the ore calcum. And lastly, the titanium. And that's enough souls of night for the onyx blaster. But I'm gonna stay down here until I mine enough titanium ore for the full armor set. Oh wait, that's the bound wizard. Okay, let's buy the crystal ball. Because with this, I can make the endless musket pouch. And that should be enough titanium. 301. Now, is 67 bars enough? Let's see. Titanium helmet. Breastplate. And leggings. Yep, it is. So right now, with the shadow armor on, my mini shark has 43 range damage. And after equipping the titanium armor... 52. That is a huge difference. Oh my god. Then, let's make the Onyx Blaster. So the attacks look like this. And I'm assuming after I level this thing up a bit, I can shoot multiple of the Onyx Blast, which is the large projectile in the middle. Let's buy enough musket balls to reach 3,996. Okay, there we go. Let's go over to the crystal ball. And now I can make the endless musket pouch. Okay, so I don't have to worry about ammo anymore. I can shoot to my heart's content. Oh, and let's also reforge the onyx blaster. Yep, I'll take rapid. Now let's go up to a sky island to kill some wyverns for their souls of flight so that I can craft myself a pair of wings. Okay, first kill, and that's actually enough 20. Now I need to farm for some more Souls of Night. Okay, and that should be enough. Got 15 Souls of Night. Now I can craft Demon Wings. Beautiful. I'm all set to take on the mechanical bosses now, but seeing that it is 3 a.m., there is just no time for that, so I'll have to fight them the next night. In the meantime, I am going to level up the Onyx Blaster. And currently, it's at level 3. And I believe it's able to shoot out two of the Onyx Blasts. Right there? I think. Yeah, yeah, right there. Okay, that's enough killing spiders. My Onyx Blaster is now at level 10. So it now has 67 range damage and 27% critical strike chance. The attacks? It looks like this. Yeah. This will replace my mini shark. Now hopefully, from selling all of these spider drops, I can reforge the Onyx Blaster into Unreal. Come on, I know you want to give it to me. Ooh. Godly. No, I can't settle. Yes, let's go. Okay, let's see what changes. 
Okay, the Onyx Blaster is insanely strong now. I'm also going to buy a bunch of musket balls. And with the cursed flames that I farmed, let's make some cursed bullets. All right. That's going to increase our damage by a bit more. And I believe it's officially nighttime now. Yep, 8 p.m. So let's summon our first boss, which is going to be the destroyer. Three, two, one. Run, run, run. Oh, come on, hit the clumped up part. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, <gasps> look at that. 10,000 damage per second. And just doing regular attacks. That's still 9,000 damage per second. Holy crap. Well, I got plenty of time to summon the rest of the bosses. So let's do the twins next. And this is going to be fairly fast as well. Second phase already. Oh my god, it didn't even have the chance to shoot out its cursed flames. And you're dead as well. And lastly, Skeletron Prime. Hopefully, I can kill all four of its hands first before actually killing the boss. Because I want to gain as much experience as possible. Jesus, that was like four shots to take out one hand. Okay, all done. Now, just ahead. Oh my god, that's satisfying. Well, there you have it. All three mechanical bosses have been defeated. I did manage to get another mechanical eye from the spiders. So, might as well. All done. And from those four mechanical bosses, that's going to bring my Onyx Blaster to... Holy... Wait... That's such a huge increase. What? Level 17? It leveled up seven times. That's crazy. Oh my god. Look at that shotgun spread. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. With some souls of might, I can upgrade the mini shark into the mega shark. So I only need to farm five shark fins. Okay, just one more shark fin to go. Oh my god, finally. Okay. Got the last shark fin. That took so long. Now I can craft the mega shark. Ooh, godly. I think I'm gonna have to reforge it to Unreal. Come on. Give it to me. Oh god. Nope, and I'm out. And unfortunately, making the Mega Shark did reset all of my stats, so we're back at level 0. And with the hollowed bars, I'll be making the full hollowed armor sets. Just for that invincibility. Now let's head into the jungle to take on Plantera. And luckily, it's right here. Perfect. So I don't have to potentially spend like 30 minutes trying to find this thing. Okay, the arena is all complete. And I did kill a bunch of mimics, so I really want to get this mega shark to Unreal. Or at least something with more attack speed before I take on Plantera. Get it. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Oh yeah, that's so much faster now. Holy! So the plan is to use the Mega Shark for this boss fight, because I do want to level this weapon up. But if things get a bit too shaky, then I'll switch over to the Onyx Blaster. Okay, three, two, one. Come to Papa. Oh, and I just forgot to check the level on the Mega Shark before I fought this boss, but it's okay. 
Second phase coming up pretty soon. There we go. Okay, yeah, don't need to use the Onyx Blaster. And you're done. Okay, Mega Shark is at level 7. Okay, so the only weapon that I'm looking for inside this treasure bag is the Venus Magnum. So hopefully I can get it. Oh! Yes, there we go. 72 range damage. Shoots a powerful high velocity bullet. So the attacks look like this. It's very similar to the Uzi, I would have to say. And I'm very curious, when I level this weapon up, since it has such high velocity bullets, it might be very accurate with the additional projectiles, unlike the Mega Shark, for example. So let's go and find out. Oh, there we go. Unreal. Almost ran out of gold there. <laughs> yeah, that's way better. Let's go take on Golem now. Okay, made it into the boss room. And it's a pretty big arena. So I should have no problems dodging attacks. Let's clear out all of the traps first. And a one level platform should be enough. Let's start this thing up. Three, two, one. Okay. So the spread on this gun isn't what I expected. I thought it'd be much more narrow, I guess. But it looks like the spread is just as bad as the Mega Shark. Head is down. Okay, that's one down. Let's use up the remaining four. Jesus! This gun shoots so fast now! What is this? Holy crap! Look at my damage per second! A constant 8,000. Okay, I've got one more to go. So fast! Now that I have the Eye of the Golem, let's take out our Ranger Emblem, let's make the Avenger Emblem, and then the Destroyer Emblem. And that's going to increase our damage by 10% and our Critical Strike Chance by 8%. So my Venus Magnum now has 132 range damage and 50% Critical Strike Chance. And from all those Golems, it brought it to level 15. But to level this weapon up even more, I am going to summon the Solar Eclipse. God damn, that Mothron got shredded. Oh my god, wait a second. I just realized something. Since the spread of the bullets are so wide, I can easily fix that by making chlorophyte bullets. Okay, after this eclipse, I'm gonna go farm a crazy amount. Okay, the solar eclipse has finally ended. Let's go to the jungle to farm some chlorophytes. And from that event, my Venus Magnum is now at level 20 and the Mega Shark level 15. So the Venus Magnum first. Looks like this. And the Mega Shark looks like this. I'm pretty sure the Mega Shark shoots a lot faster. Judging from the sound. But that's just me. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, I think that should be enough. Chlorophyte 565. Okay, how many Chlorophyte bullets can I make? Almost 7,000. And that amount should last me throughout the end of the game. Let's go test out these bullets against the Lunatic Cultist. Here we are. 
Let's begin. Oh yeah. Okay, 6,000 damage per second. Oh. All, just every single one of these bullets are locked on. I think I might have been able to do more damage if I used the Venus Magnum because it does have 142 range damage and the attack speed doesn't fall too far from the Mega Shark. Let's go take down the Vortex Pillar first. Okay, Vortex Pillar is done. With the fragments, I can now craft the Vortex Beater. Let's reforge this to Unreal. There we go. And the attacks look like this. And that blue projectile that you guys see, that is a homing projectile. Now, once I level this weapon up, there's going to be multiple of those blue projectiles. Pair it up with the chlorified bullets, and you're going to end up with a death machine gun. Oh yeah, it is coming along. Look at that. That's over five homing projectiles now. Okay, Nebula Pillar is done. Two more to go. Solar Pillar is done. One more to go. Jesus. And the size of the Vortex Beater too. It increased. What? Alright, and that's the last pillar done. Let's go get ready for Moonlord. And from all those celestial pillars, it has brought my Vortex Beater to level 17. God damn! Yeah, Moonlight's gonna get obliterated. Okay, let's swap into our chlorified bullets. Here we go. Oh! Oh my god, my game! Whoa! My game legit froze. Jesus! I swear I saw 80,000 damage per second. Oh yeah. Yeah, look at that. Oh! My frames! Alright, that's going to be it everyone. Hope you all enjoyed. I know there were a bunch of other guns that I didn't use, but if you guys want to try those ones out for yourselves, I'll leave all the mods I've used in the description below. If you've enjoyed watching, don't forget to leave a like comment if you have any other mod or video ideas you want me to try out and of course subscribe to the channel i'll see you all in the next one peace